Hello folks, Prasad Domla here and in this video I'll show you how to set up and use workspaces on AWS. So let's get started. So what is a workspace? So a workspace is a desktop as a service solution provided by AWS. It is a managed service, meaning all the backend infrastructure is managed by AWS. These virtual desktops can be either Windows or Linux and can be provisioned in minutes. Using Amazon workspaces, you can simplify desktop delivery and it's less load on administrators as the lifecycle of desktop like provisioning, deploying and maintaining is taken care by AWS. It reduces costs as well. You can simply turn it off when it's not required and you won't be charged for uh, compute. You can also use auto stop feature to stop the instance if it's idle to save some costs. All the data and files are streamed to your local machine over a secure channel and it will be deployed in your uh, VPC with persistent data. You can encrypt your root and data volumes using KMS to make it even more secure and robust. Now let's quickly have a look at the architecture of what we'll be building today. I have a VPC with two private subnets and two public subnets. I have a NAT gateway in my public uh, subnets for outbound internet access. When it comes to authentication, you can authenticate your uh, workspaces using any of these uh, directory services. You can use simple AD, which is AWS managed directory with limited features of uh, Active Directory. It is perfectly fine to use with uh, workspaces as you don't need advanced features of uh, a fully featured Active Directory. You can also use AWS managed and full featured Microsoft Active Directory. And finally, you can connect to your existing corporate Active Directory on-prem or on uh, Azure um, using AD connectors. So you have multiple options to manage your uh, workspaces users. When you create any of these directory services, you will be asked to choose the subnets you wish to create these resources. I'm choosing my two private subnets here, which will create an ENI, that is uh, Elastic Network Interface, in the subnets of my choice. Next, we have the workspaces itself. These workspaces are user-specific, so the subnets are determined based on the subnets of your uh, directory service. Outbound connections from your workspaces will be based on the route tables of the subnets where your directory services are created. So make sure your directory services are in appropriate subnets. In my case, I have a route to NAT gateway for outbound internet access. Like directory services, Workspace also creates an ENI in the subnets of your choice. And you can also use KMS to encrypt your root and data volumes attached to your workspace. On the end user's machine, we need to install the Workspace's client to be able to connect to your workspace. Clients are available for all major platforms. Now let's get on to AWS console and build a workspace. I'm logged into my AWS console and I'm in Sydney region. Let me quickly show you my VPC and subnets. I have a VPC with a three tier subnet architecture, public, private, and database, one in each availability zone. I have my internet gateway attached to the VPC and an NAT gateway. I have three route tables, one for each tier. My public route table has a route to internet gateway and my uh, private and database uh, route tables have a route to NAT gateway for outbound internet access. If you want to create the exact uh, VPC subnet structure as I have here, you can use my Terraform templates. I'll leave the link in the description. First step is to create a directory. I'll use simple AD for this demo. You can choose uh, any of the options I mentioned earlier. Let me go to the directory service console and set up a directory. You'll have four options here, as I mentioned. I'll choose simple AD and click next. I'll go for small size here. And for DNS name, I'll just provide workspaces demo.com. And I'll set my administrator password. And the description. and click next. Now you need to specify networking options. I'll choose my VPC and for subnets, I'll choose my private subnets in 2A and 2B and click next. You can review your configuration here and click create directory. This will start the directory creation process. It might take anywhere up to 10 minutes. I'll pause the video here and continue when our uh, simple AD is ready. Our simple AD is now ready. One last thing we need to do is to enable workspaces on our directory so that the directory can be used by workspaces for authentication. 
So click on your newly created uh, Simple AD and scroll down to AWS Apps and Services. As you can see here, Simple AD is compatible with all these AWS services, including Management Console. By default, all these services will be disabled. So let's enable Workspaces for our demo. Click on Amazon Workspaces link here and you'll be taken to Workspaces Console. And by default, you can see that the Simple AD is not registered. Let's select it and from the Actions menu, click register and you'll be asked to choose your subnets from 2A and 2B which are the subnets of our uh, simple AD. I'll choose my two private subnets. Next we have a couple of options under configurations. Enable self-service permissions which enables users to manage their workspaces like rebuilding, changing volume size or compute size and so on. If you want these configurations to be managed only by admins, you can select no here. I'll leave it as default for this demo. And you can also optionally enable work docs. I'll leave it as default and click register. It should take a couple of seconds to uh, register our simple AD with workspaces. Now we can set up our uh, workspace. So click on workspaces in the left navigation and click launch workspaces. The registered directories will be populated in the dropdown automatically. Select your directory and click next. Here we have an option to create users. We can also use AD administration tools on a Windows machine to create users. We can search for existing users in the search box here. As our simple AD is new, we don't have any users. So let's create one. Fill in the details of the new user. Make sure you provide a valid email here. Once a workspace is ready, an email will be sent to this email address with registration code and links to set the password. The new user is added to the list here. You can select up to 20 users and create workspaces for all those users in one go. Here we need to select our bundles. A bundle is nothing but an operating system with a bunch of pre-installed applications. By default, AWS provides Amazon Linux 2 and Windows 10 bundles with some basic software like browser, open source office, on Linux, and so on. We can create our own standard bundles with all the software pre-installed. Say you have a bunch of developers or engineers who need specific set of tools. You can create a bundle with all those tools pre-installed. And whenever you have a new developer, you can just use that bundle to launch a workspace for that new developer. In terms of hardware configurations, AWS provides seven options, value, standard, performance, graphics, graphics pro, power and power pro. These hardware types are based on CPU memory, default root and user volume sizes. Hardware specs range from one virtual CPU to 16 virtual CPUs and memory ranging from 2 GB to 122 GB. Root and user volumes can be modified according to your uh, disk requirements. In case of Windows 10, you can create a workspace with Office 2016 pre-installed. The license costs are included in the workspace pricing. For this demo, I'll choose a standard Amazon Linux 2 and leave the volume sizes as default. Next, we have two important options, running mode and encryption. Running mode will help you reduce your costs. We have two options, always on, which obviously means it will always be running and you'll be charged for the whole month, even if you're not using it. We have an auto stop option, which will stop your workspace if you're idle or not using the workspace for say two hours. You can configure that value here. You can configure the idle time from one hour to 48 hours. You can resume the workspace again when you need it. All your apps and document state will be persisted and you won't lose any data. This will save costs significantly. I'll choose two hours as my idle time for this workspace. Next option is the encryption and we can encrypt both root and user volumes using KMS. If you have encryption requirements, you can create your keys on KMS like you normally do for uh, any other AWS service and use those keys to encrypt your volumes. I'll leave this uh, unchecked for this demo. Next, we have tags. Like any other AWS resource, you can add all the tags you want for the workspaces like username, department, and so on. Review your configuration here and click launch workspaces. The creation might take up to 20 minutes. You'll receive an email when it's ready. I'll pause the video here and resume when I receive the email. My workspace is available now and I received an email with the registration code and password setup link. Let me set my password by clicking the link in the email. I'll set my new password on the screen here. Once the password is updated, 
will be taken to a page where you can download Workspaces Client for your platform. And as I mentioned, it supports all major platforms, including iPads and tablets. I have my Workspaces Client for Mac installed already. Let me open my Workspaces Client. On the welcome screen, you need to provide the registration code from the email. Enter your registration code here and click register. Next, you will be taken to a login screen. Login using your credentials. I'm logged into my Amazon Linux 2 workspace. And as you can see, we have a full GUI experience and you can use it as your desktop in the cloud. Depending on the route tables attached to your subnets, you can access all your VPC resources or VPC peered resources and even internet. So that's the process of setting up your workspaces. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos and uh, tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next one.